Hello, this is Ross from Figure Painting and welcome to another, to another battle report. This time it's an uh, exciting game of Blucher, Napoleonic game. Um, we're using late war French versus late war Prussians. A good friend Roger's come along and uh, has brought the armies, set everything up, the whole thing. It's great. He likes to set up battles and I love to play them. So works very well and uh, lucky me. So, um, oh yeah, there, there's 200 points of Prussians, 200 points of French. I hadn't seen either army list, and I just opted to go French. So, this is the Prussian list that Roger's put together. You can have a look at that uh, in detail. Um, I haven't really gone through how the point system works, so I can't help much on this one. But as you can see, it's three cores. Basically, two of them are line, with, um, and one cavalry. And is um, most of the artillery is attached to the infantry, and there's two batteries in play. And here's my French list. Oh yeah, the interesting thing I should have mentioned on the Prussians is they've got a special character, Blucher, or Blucher, sorry. Uh, his special characteristics are legends. The army breaks on 50% casualties instead of a third casualties. So that's helpful in a game like this, bloodthirsty game of Blucher. And uh, here's the French, and I've got two cracking characters, I have to say. Uh, Marmor is vigorous, which is fantastic. So when you're paying the activation points for a core, you halve it. So very useful in this particular scenario, because you can see the first core is very large. There's a whole load of uh, stuff to move there. So if I want to move all seven of them, so it costs in seven points, it's down to four. So that became very helpful. But the real star is Druo, the artillery commander. Five points. Like I say, I don't really know the point system, but I would say he's every bit as good as the other guy. Uh, what he allows you to do, each turn Marmor is sitting with an artillery, sorry, Druo is sitting with an artillery battery. You can either lay the guns, which means you get an extra dice of shooting, or you can spend the turn reloading and get your ammunition back, which is a massive thing in this game. Uh, Particularly as one of the things in Blucher, which seems a bit strange to me, is there's no opportunity to reload the guns. And also it's assumed your first salvo is the best, and it gradually gets less effective. You basically get five dice first time, then four, then four again, three, and then uh, two, two. And that's it, you're out of ammo. When you can't build that back up, and you can't use the sort of two dice or three dice at the beginning. So it's an interesting system. I'm sure it's well thought out, but it seems a little bit strange to me. Uh, and when you've got this Druo guy for just five points, really is um, a big advantage. So first thing you do is pick the terrain, roll two dice each. Each takes the highest. We rolled um, five each, so that's ten points, or ten pieces of scenery. Put five each down. This is shot from my side of the table. I played a bit of a defensive hill, some farmland protecting it. What I'm thinking is I've got this really cool artillery guy, I've got heavy artillery, I'm just going to find a good spot and blast away. But the thing with Blucher is you don't know which side you're going to be on. And sure enough I end up the other side. <laughs> so that hill I placed in the top corner with the farm field in front of it and the hill to the side, uh, sorry the difficult terrain to the side of it, makes a very nice spot. Uh, the dark green areas of woods, we will pop some trees on in a minute. The brown areas are difficult terrain. You can see the hill. The other thing you notice is the little round discs. Uh, they get to be placed on objectives. So the first one goes on the hill, as you see. And I think um, there's an order of priorities. Town first, then hills, cro river crossings, that kind of stuff. But it only applies to your deployment zone. There's not much over there. So we ended up with one in the middle, one on the hill, and one over to the other side uh, in the wood, I think. So there's the Prussian deployment. As you know in Blucher, you put your um, cards face down. Each one of those cards represents a brigade. Could be infantry, cavalry, artillery. I don't know until I hit it, or it reveals itself. And the advantage of staying in opportunity is your first turn uh, is nine uh, card lengths, or base widths, which is massive. You know, it's 36 inches. You can more or less go from there to anywhere, uh, as long as you don't go close to the enemy. That's the only restriction. But 
it's a massive advantage. Also, if they're fired at by artillery, the artillery person only gets half the dice. So a big part of this game is keeping them face down as long as possible to keep that sort of strategic advantage or tactical edge. So as attacker, I get to deploy second. And you can see um, my big brigade is on the left. Well, not brigade, sorry, big uh, corps or big division is on the left. And then I've got it the wrong way around a bit because I should have put the cavalry division with the horse artillery at the front and the infantry behind them. Don't know the way around, doesn't make a big difference. Just meant that a bit of a potch getting my horse artillery into the game. Especially with Druo, it's worth getting the artillery firing every round. That's my view anyway. Okay, so it's a 15 turn game. Um, the idea is to break the other, other side's army by then or hold two objectives when the clock runs out. So my first turn, I plop my heavy artillery on and nudge them up next to the village. I was making a bit of a strong point there. It seemed a bit necessary in the end because, of course, I'm the attacker. Yeah, emphasis on me to go and take those objectives. And, um, yeah, by revealing the infantry brigades, which are there to protect it, it means they now plod along at infantry rate instead of reserve rate. So might be prudent, but a bit, little bit pointless as it turned out. Oh, you also notice the mug at the top of the table. The clever thing with Blucher is activating a unit if it's part of a core, it's one point each. If you start moving individual things, they're two points. And as someone pointed out to me, if you start moving um, the, sm the, the small one, then everything counts as two points. So basically you've got to move your larger cores first if you want to move them. So um, I'll have a blind shot, see if I can reveal one of those cards. Oh, there wasn't a picture for it. So I managed to get a hit on the objective on the left, on the hill, see what's there holding it. It was horse artillery, well, the result, and they just ride back. Don't take any hits or anything. So it's a bit pointless, but there we are. <laughs> At least I know what's there. Right. 14 turns to go, so on to turn two. So I immediately deploy my large big uh, division. You can see them on the far left there. They're piling up, getting ready to assault the hill. The art and realizing uh, almost immediately that it would have been a more powerful attack with these extra three brigades of infantry with them, all as one big core, especially with Marmor there to activate them at half the points. It would have been seven lots, seven brigades. I've also kept the cavalry face down. There's a bit of discussion about this from... Uh, our observer should get on to. But I'm thinking they could be useful wherever I want to put them. One thing we did come up with later, uh, Mark, who was watching, came up with a good suggestion. The light cavalry could have just galloped down the middle as a sort of scout, which would have revealed the central core of the Prussians and made them an easier target to hit and would have pinned them. It would have stopped them doing their reserve move. So that's worth thinking about for future games. It's a two point activation. But at the moment, with most of the stuff in reserve, I'm not really using the points anyway, so I think that would have been a, a, a good idea. And we're thinking about for future games. See, we start to roll up on the left. The artillery have uh, fired, half dice the pot shot. Appears you can't see it. There you go, so it's five uh, points of artillery. Well, it's four points. Plus one for Mar sorry, Druo, who is there. So that's five points of artillery. Halve it, three dice. It's halved because they're blind. The cards are face down. And there's a six in there. So that was the hit on the horse artillery on the hill. There he is. He's revealed. But he's going to dash off. <laughs> but the good news is the rest of that... Uh, on Roger's turn, he's moved up to protect this position. And now I can see some targets. So I now know what I'm going up against. I think they're probably better quality. I should have mentioned that, um, if you didn't notice at the army list at the beginning, most of the French are, are poor quality conscripts, but they do have the attached, attached artillery, uh, which gives the extra dice, and they've all got skirmishes as well, which means the first five you roll also counts. Same as with heavy artillery. You don't count all your fives, but if you do get one, that's an extra hit. So those conscripts seem great to me. And in Roger's uh, centre of the uh, 
the Prussian position, the horse artillery have revealed themselves. They start shooting, probably firing into the flank of this attack as it comes in. And the artillery fire again. As you can see, it's half dice. Not exactly sure what we shot at there. Yeah, so the horse artillery have opened up with five dice. Three sixes. Ouch. So that's three points off those infantry. You can't recover them. I think they started on five, so immediately down to two. They're what I call the, the cannonball catcher's brigade. And luckily, their mates got off a bit lighter. <laughs> okay, next turn, turn, th turn three. So the brigades that were loitering back at the village with the guns, they're pushing to join the attack. You can see the one in the middle. It's got a two next to it. It's down to two hits. So I really should have got more brigades in there to push this issue. The one thing I can do is literally use them as cannon fodder and use up some of the ammunition of the Prussians because they cannot reload the cannons. So it's hurting. But hey, that's what conscripts are for. And here comes another round of shooting. Two more hits. prefer to do it if the artillery was missing, but... Uh, there you go. So time for my artillery to return some fire now. Just checking the angle. They fire at 45 degrees. So they easily get past the friendly foot, which they couldn't shoot over otherwise. And they're going to be aiming at the brigade on the hill next to the artillery. And as you can see, they're there up to three now. Done a couple of hits on those. And they're going to be getting a pounding also know it's number four on the artillery that represents how many shots they're on the way we do it is five then four then for the second four we put a little yellow square on so four star and all misses so thank you for that so the Prussian horse artillery has opened up on these poor blokes standing in this muddy field it's only one hit if it'd been heavy artillery that five would have counted as well that's the advantage of heavy artillery. The horse artillery advantage is they can, of course, move and shoot. Whereas the heavy artillery can't do that. Okay, 12 turns to go. So this is the assault on the left flank. And that marker represents two base lengths, which is the range for infantry and canister. So the columns are sort of massing just outside of musket range, ready to get themselves a bit better lined up for the charge. You'll also see the guy with only, well the brigade sorry, with only two pit points left has dropped back a bit. The ones at the back left are the ones in red. They're my Saxon guards. They're, they're supposed to be the, the good guys, the elite. So they're staying out of there while hopefully more cannonballs are <laughs> soaked up by the conscripts. Uh, you don't want to be a low-grade troop in one of my armies. It's the artilleries blasted away again and heavy artillery so the five counts that's two hits it's five dice because uh, good old Druo is there the way we do it is it's five little marker shows four then four yellow is four star so next turn they're down to three shots unless we've already changed it yep so those poor uh, that poor brigade there guarding the flank of the artillery is now down to one hit point left I think Roger might even have uh, removed them off the table because uh, if you remove them, they don't count as killed. So it, it means you break a bit slower. It's, it's a little bit less than just losing them. Yeah, there are two chances to finish them off. Four dice. No. It's not all sixes. I can see uh, the Prussians there taking a look at uh, coming into the flank of this assault. We can't the best way of stopping it. There's another view of that. All things still quiet in the centre. Yep, and I think you see the, the unit was at the side of the, the hill. It's either withdrawn behind the hill or gone off the table. Just getting blasted there. And we're just moving into shooting range now. And the artillery. Oh, it's a miss. So the guy's on uh, the, the brigade on two. Almost destroyed there. But not going to be today. And I'm going to wangle it so they don't get shot at again, though. 
and another round of firing coming in on the poor bloke stuck in the muddy field and the cannonballs are just splatting into the mud and not doing any more damage to them but they are using up precious valuable Prussian ammunition okay 11 turns to go still you can see the reserves are mostly still hidden and that attack on the left flank is starting to push in where I've realized those extra two brigades one of which is getting blown up in the muddy field as well stay there catching cannonballs it'd be useful to get that uh, the brigade just behind the artillery up so it's going to be one turn into the village one turn out of the village kind of situation and a couple more turns before they can join the assault so keep pounding I suppose and uh, buy a bit of time to get some more numbers up there and there's uh, my opponent in the distance there having a chat with uh, our observer Mark who came along for the evening to see a game of Blucher who's, who spotted a lot of things I've done wrong apparently and is uh, a little conflab there far away from my listening ears I know one thing they were talking about was the cavalry which uh, I was holding back as long as possible but now I've noticed the Prussians have cavalry you might not see it on the picture but the guys in the the muddy field on the left as we look are Prussian cavalry which are a bit of a nuisance because I'm either going to prepare my infantry to fend off the cavalry charge or stay in shooting formation and the cavalry gets an advantage that kind of thing so the cavalry have come across out of reserve to block that More shots, this is. And three more dice. I think that must be from the artillery. They've got into canister range. And they've done another hit. So they're starting to get a bit of damage now. This uh, assault is getting battered. Ten turns to go. The artillery open up. And miss, you did quite well on that there. And as you can see, uh, I think that shot comes slightly out of sequence then of the shooting. But anyway, the cavalry are allowed to pass through as long as they can, uh, if, they, if they land on, they sort of push the other unit back. Anyway, they had plenty of movement. So they've done that gamey thing where I'm in the open. So if the Prussians charge the French, the French get an extra dice on the Prussians, because the Prussians will lose one dice for being in difficult terrain. Oh, sorry, my cat just jumped up on me then. <laughs> Ow. Thanks, Neko. So the, 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 the brigade that was in the muddy field has pushed up, covering the flank of the art heavy artillery, which is also pushing up. The thinking here was to get right up to close range and then canister whatever is still standing on that hill, or even that artillery, and completely clear the way. I'm imagining heavy artillery with Truo, canister range. It's a lot of dice. I mean, in theory, it could be seven dice with a five counting. So the horse artillery are wasting their ammunition, trying to reveal one of those cards in the centre. And that suggestion by Mark, looking back at it, one of my light cavalry could have just galloped up, turned all those cards over, and galloped back again. Anyway, we've gone for the take your chances, two dice, give it a go that way and that missed right back over to the left flank as you can see things are starting to build up some pressure now the extra brigades coming in but unfortunately the two central most brigades are damaged, one's down to two the other one's already starting to take damage down to four yes and that horse artillery in the centre has come wheeling into uh, pour some canister into the flank but don't forget the number of dice rolled is coming down every turn so that Prussian canister is only going to be about three or four dice still could be pretty deadly okay so there's the situation assaults building on the left yeah in comes the canister three dice another hit they're down to three but the artillery is getting used up <laughs> not much not much consolation if you're one of the guys in there the brigade catching the cannonballs, but there we go. What did Napoleon say? What's a million men to a man like me? Okay, and this is where I learned a lesson about Blucher. You move, you don't shoot. Your opponent then has his turn, 
and he shoots. Now if you shoot at long range, that's two base lengths, you get half strength shooting dice to roll sixes. If you get to within one, you get your full strength. And don't forget, plus one for the artillery. So those Prussians on the hill are getting seven dice shooting. And I don't shoot back until my turn, which will be with the number after the casualties. So if you want to get into a shooting battle in Blucher, start at long range, I would recommend, unless you've got a massive advantage. Go at long range and hope to only take a couple of hits and then do more the other way, because those guys get shot to pieces. The, the artillery trying its two dice in the centre. <laughs> Again. And it was a lucky hit this time, so we've revealed a unit in the centre, it's no longer in reserve. And we can now shoot at it, because it's in the open, just asking for cannonballs. Oh, terrible blurry picture, which is a shame. The, as I said, the French columns have gone marching in. I failed my impetuous roll, not the troops. The, um, the Prussian cavalry, you might note, on the top left have gone back, and the Prussian cavalry pursuing up to cover the flank. A little bit reckless again. Oh well. Um, as you can see there, the horse artillery in the centre is now a little bit outgunned here, because you've got this horse ar uh, sorry, heavy artillery with Drouot reloading. I'm about to blast them out, so they're going to get out of there. They're skedaddling. I think they're probably down to their last shot anyway. So if they shoot again, they'll be removed from the game, so it seems a bit harsh in artillery, this, the rules somehow. And meanwhile, we're lining up what's happening with the cavalry, pushing up. All our Prussian infantry is going to shoot. And it's this kind of thing. Ow. Three sixes and the first five, because he's got skirmishes. That's four hits. I mean, it's just devastating. So they immediately go down to two. The other guys get a shot. I think it's oh, just outside, I think. No. There we are. I think, I th I think well, I disagree is in. I meant to push them in. If it's just out by technicality, well, I'm not worried about things like that. Roll is seven dice, Roger. Boom, two more hits. Could have been worse. <laughs> Painful, but could have been worse. And the problem is that uh, the infantry and the attached artillery, which gives the extra dice, they don't run out of ammunition. They keep shooting. Anyway, eight turns to go. So, um, yeah, just going to get blasted if I stay there. The problem is, the, the guys you see on two hits, they're in a great position to uh, shoot, but they're only on two dice now, plus one for the cannon, three dice. You know, even if I roll great, it's not going to, there's still going to be an awful lot of dice coming back. So it's like, pull back, pull back, you've overrun yourselves, boys. So they do, and in fact, they go right back, and the elite red unit which you can see with um, the general next to them, Marmont, pushing them forward, has jumped in front of them. So now, the good, the bad thing about the situation is there's some really beaten up brigades there. There's a couple of twos, a three, a four, whatever. They're all in bad shape. The good news is I've managed to smuggle all those out of harm's way. They've done their job. They've caught the cannonballs, caught rather too many musket balls as well. And now fresh units are ready for the assault. So that's the plan anyway. Once again, the artillery, we've now got that lovely target in the middle of the table. It's heavy artillery, so the five counts. So just chip one off there. See, it's down to four. It was on six, got one from the lucky hit earlier, plus that one now, down to four. And there you see the horse artillery skedaddling. And now everything's pushed up. Now you can shoot at me, but this time it's half dice. So I, I, I can live with that. You've got to take some casualties. Unfortunately, the guys on the right take another hit. Down to three. Not sure if they're much good for anything now, really, but there we are. They've soaked up the shots. <laughs> ah, it's a callous business being a Napoleonic commander. Okay, and they're getting shot at. The elites, my Saxon guards, a few decent units have caught the whole game. One six, so they're down to five. That's a shame, because if they stayed at six, with the plus one for the artillery attached. Oh, I'm not sure if they had artillery attached. Ah, anyway, it's still a casualty. 
and shooting off the hill at these guys. Half dice. Oh, they all missed. Thanks for that. Okay, seven turns. To ah, shocking picture. But anyway, there's a six and a five in there. I think that's two hits. Is that the horse artillery problem? No, that's the horse artillery. So it's one hit. Then the heavy artillery is uh, still pounding those guys in the centre. Another couple of hits on them. Yep, down to two. Bad day for those guys. And French turn to shoot back. So we got uh, at the top the six gives me one hit. Uh, the, the two brigades in the centre of the picture there, they both fire at the guys in the hill. And the ones at the bottom, six and the five, because they've got skirmishes, the five counts. So that's two hits, so three hits total. You can see uh, they're down to two on the hill now. So not so scary when they're shooting back. And now for the Saxon Guard, my one decent unit. Uh, they're down to five, half that for the long range. Three dice. Boom! Ha <laughs> ha! Triple six. You don't see that very often. That's a real gutter for the for Roger there and the Prussians. That's just halved them from a six-point unit to a three-point unit. And you can see they've got the cavalry and the infantry. They're one of these mixed units, which are really powerful, apparently. Also, my cavalry have gone piling in through the muddy field. Not sure how smart that was. There you go. If you've got cavalry, charge them. Don't get any charge bonus in this, unfortunately. I guess it's brigade level, so they're counter-charging or whatever. Uh, you can't see all my dice. I roll five. Prussians roll five. We're both at minus one because of the muddy field. Maybe there was a bonus because I think he's six cavalry and I'm five. Anyway, the point is we both did three, so I didn't win the melee, which means I bounce off. There's another shot, pretty much the same thing. Oh, you can see the casualties now, yeah. So I might have dropped down to two, taking two hits. The way the game works for the draw, he just takes one fatigue, he's out of five. It's a very bad result for the cavalry. Just sat in the field, or sat just outside the field, doing a good job. Everything was fine. Crazy cavalry for you. So they've got to come back to base lengths. That's what the rule is there for. Off they go. And the Prussians follow up. And they do their charge. Now they've got the advantage. They're five against three. Both minus a dice. It's going to be four dice against two dice. So he's hot on favourite there now. And the shooting's going to come back as well, of course. And... That's actually, it looks like reserve being revealed. It's, it's the horse artillery um, finding a better spot over there, getting away. Yeah, there they are. So only two guys back. It's halved, of course, and he's just taken a pounding off the Saxon guard, who are okay. Shooting off the hill. Yeah, the hit. Well, two dice, got a chance. The artillery, two dice miss. So now I'm thinking my numbers are going to start counting. The grind is on. Ah, apart from this bit. <laughs> there we are, two hits, piece one hit. Back I go. And they're cavalry in trouble. And it's time to commit the reserve in the centre. I reckon that unit in the middle's taken a pummeling. And what that also does is... In all this, well, in Blucher and uh, Maurice, you have to keep your units linked to count them as one division. So if I can destroy the one in the middle, effectively it breaks them up into two commands. It can be a lot more difficult to order them around. And, that's, and also, it's the advantage is there now. It's time to push. So that reveals his reserve because they're now within uh, the range that's needed. Ah, and here's the shooting. If that's that's me shooting back, yeah, all misses. Disappointing. Just trying to shoot the guys off the hill. Yep, and the other unit's got one hit. Ah, look at that, one left. Six dice could have got two hits. Fives and sixes count. You'd think you're going to do it. Oh well, didn't. Oh yes, and the one more unit to shoot. It's the Saxon Guard, the ones who got the triple six last time. Boom! Triple six again! <laughs> I worked out the odds of like 43,000 to 1 against rolling uh, 
six consecutive sixes. I've never seen it before, probably never seen it again. Amazing. Shows the probabilities of dice is absolute nonsense. So that poor unit on the left, last turn went from six to three. This turn goes from three to zero. And there's now a big hole. And if the guys on the hill are gone as well, that would have been it. The flank would have gone. Still, it's more or less gone already. So there we go. I'm glad there's a witness there. Six consecutive sixes. Well, I guess I couldn't expect to hit with the artillery as well. <laughs> so I can't complain about that. Six turns to go. Time to push for the win now. Yep. Uh, the cavalry getting crunched on the left, of course. And as you can see, there's very little defending that hill where the objective is now. And trying to push them up in the centre. I mean, a little bit sneaky here. Because there, there's a gap. The guys with the marker underneath them have only got one hit on them, so they're hopefully going to drop now from the artillery or something. And then if I get it right, I can get possibly three brigades all shooting one. But generally, it's push forward and try and... Uh, crush the centre with the left flank about to sweep round. So you can see the situation there. Yeah, poor guys on the hill. Roll away one dice, got one. But the cavalry are running. <laughs> They're not coming back. So you can see the blue square, if you can see it. Anyway, what I've had to do is the, the very last unit has changed to prepared formation. Oh, how I wish I'd turned them to face the cavalry. Because, as it turned out, Roger just couldn't roll enough pips to ever activate that cavalry again. And if they'd stayed there, because he shot them and shot them and shot them. But I was afraid if he'd activated one turn and wasn't prepared, they could have wiped out that brigade very easily. So, uh, unfortunately, even though you're sort of forming a square, you all face forward still. So nothing much happens again over there. It's a standoff. But the other brigades are all free now to go and uh, storm over the hill and start to wrap round, hopefully. Yep, we're just pointing out there that the, the ones on the right have become prepared and the, the guard are marching onward. And time to bring up my cavalry reserve, and they've gone to the far right using their reserve move. Either looking to come sweeping round or commit his reserve. And as you can see, I've managed to nudge them up in the centre, so we've got two to one shooting on there, and the artillery hopefully flinching off the middle one. And this time staying at long range rather than getting massacred. So there's the two brigades of infantry trying to get that one hit to finish off the unit that was left on the hill, if you remember, one hit on it. So the first one shoots the five, it's good enough with the skirmishes. Second brigade not required. So that's the hill cleared. And the artillery take their shot at that unit on the other objective in the centre. I think two more hits needed, three more sixes. <laughs> Oops. So, uh, yeah, there's the gap in that uh, core we were looking for. Okay, so the push in the centre starts. I try, so I use up all my sixes with those Saxons. And this is where I think. The artillery thing is really counting as well here, because there's that artillery in the centre helping uh, guard the Prussian centre, but they're almost out of ammunition. Whereas I've had Druo going back and forth, making sure one is getting reloaded all the time, so I've always got a good handful of dice coming if I need them. Druo, get him every time. And uh, Roger's committed his reserve. Nothing much else to do now, really, is there? So. Uh, Give it a try and see if you can snatch something. So the reserve comes on. Uh, he's effectively activated four units. The idea was get those lined up there and then uh, try and get that cavalry charging on the left or get really messing things up. But unfortunately, I, roll, I rolled a three for him. Uh, the other way, the big cup, this is how we do it. In, uh, if I haven't mentioned this before in Blucher, your opponent rolls two dice to see how many activation points you've got and hides them. So we just roll them in the cup and put it on the table. So you don't know how many points you've got to use. You can't really plan. You have to guess a bit. So Roger used four points bringing on that reserve. That was end of turn. Nothing else could move. So nightmare, really, with that pressure coming on. So he's done a hit anyway, the other the one shot. They were 
half dice. Oh yeah, the guys in the middle, if I mentioned it, the artillery have got rid of those. Five turns to go. And the artillery are firing again now, another two hits. It's getting quite brutal. Well, <laughs> kind of brutal. <laughs> two hard is one. I don't know, anyway, it doesn't matter, all misses. This is where it starts to count. Managed to get all three brigades all firing at one target. So you can add them up. A six and a five. Uh, two hits. Nine dice. A bit disappointing, but there we go. And the cavalry are starting to mash into each other. Roger's gone for the what the heck kind of approach. So they they are good, the Prussian cavalry, but they are outnumbered. There we go. So the way the melee is working, Blue Share, you roll a dice for each point you've got. Four plus, oh sorry, four, five, or six is a hit. Count the hits and work out the score based on a table. So as dice always do to you, uh, Rogers rolled six dice for the Prussians and got one hit. I rolled five dice for the French like Gav and got three hits. Hurrah! So they won and sent them flying backwards. There you go. I think only one casualty. I think should, well. So the middle one, um, so my better cavalry, that's the only light cavalry I've got, just one near melee. All the rest I've got are reasonably good cavalry. So now I've got six dice this time. So of course, only two hits. <laughs> Russians roll three. Crashing through without charge. Back of the cavalry. Take a couple of hits. And four turns to go. Speeding up now. Trying to get the game finished in time. There's not an awful lot happening. As you can see, the left flank is swinging round. And it's engaged. What units Roger had left. Just trying to hold them back. And I've decided there that the thing is, my the units have got there. I was thinking of pushing those Saxon guards in again. They've been heroes. Just march them up and say, go on, shoot them, and then watch me roll a load of sixes again. And I kind of should have done that just for the sake of fate and to make a good story. But oh, the number of games I've thrown away being reckless in winning positions. So they've stayed back because uh, all my other brigades there are quite beaten up now. So it's like, okay. We've taken the objective, they've beaten the brigade, they're occupying, sorry, they've beaten one division, they're occupying another one. We're just going to stand there. If you want to come to us, fine, we'll shoot you. And let's win the game on the in the middle now, on the right. I think it's four more units needed to break the Prussians. So these guys are piling up, and one five. Oh, yeah, you'll also notice the cavalry in the centre have gone in. Yeah, it's one of those pickles, Napoleonic classics, where if he prepared his infantry, I'd have shot them at advantage, and the artillery would be easier to hit. If he doesn't prepare them, the cavalry go in. So, fair enough, the cavalry have charged in. Again, so, um, yeah. Four dice each. <laughs> the cavalry roll four hits to one. Oops. Yeah. Just in case you can't count to four, so they down to. Oh, yeah, you can see the markers appeared now to show that that infantry unit is well and truly battered. So that Prussian cavalry, which has broken through, is now engulfed by the other three units. Um, we all roll their attack dice, so six hits for the French, three hits for the Prussians. That's a win by three, so it's quite a battering for the Prussian cavalry. They're going back. So they've gone rushing back. The French cavalry's all over the place now, formation-wise, but it's, it's just desperately trying to get the break before the game ends. Pushing up in the centre. As you know, that unit's been battered by the cavalry, and the other unit's now getting shot by three brigades. So the Prussian cavalry charge in on the right, beating up that unit. Also, uh, before the photograph, charge on the left, and you can see us down to one. <laughs> so it's a good job I did have more cavalry units because uh, the ones that are fighting get a bit of a pounding. But there again, it's the light cavalry out the way. Good stuff coming through, <clears throat> something like that. See, I cut the hits. Fresh cavalry comes through from the back and obviously gets nowhere and bounces off. But there is another brigade of cavalry coming up, so numbers are going to start to tell now. Okay, three turns to go. Can we force the. And there's the centre. Ah, oh, what a shame, it's a blurry picture. Enough shooting, just destroy them. It was there. Uh, yeah, carnage in the centre, really, all those brigades of infantry. 
And on the right, managed to get the charges in. And have really got the Prussian cavalry reeling now. They don't uh, disappoint each. And we're just trying to run them away just to keep them alive. Because I think it's one or two more units to break. And they're retreating back to the far corner. Guys, this, this whole division is going to be chasing. And with the cavalry nowhere left to run, the centre gone. All the objectives, so that's how we called it. A very exciting game. It was really good fun. Well, I enjoyed it. <laughs> so overall, the the battle went pretty much to plan with um, the big left hook coming across, taking that objective and then pushing on through the centre. I mean, it did help rolling a lot of sixes at the right time. <laughs> But um, I've had a week or so to think about it since I did the report. And, and it does seem the French have a very powerful army. They're both 200 points. But especially with Druo giving that massive bonus to the artillery and the opportunity to pound away. And then superior numbers as well. I think it's a tough, uh, tough situation for the Prussians. One thing I did think of afterwards was a little bit like Ligny here with the, the Prussians standing on the hill getting pounded. I wonder if they could have gone on the reverse slope. Because that would have mean my advancing columns would have had to advance a short range, get shot. I could even have done that with um, the cannons as well and got the, the grape shot in. So something I thought about as a possible defence. Um, or support that flank a bit more early on, I think, really, because once that went, it was difficult. The other problem, of course, is nowhere to hide in the centre. So, um, yeah, the French seemed very powerful to me. Um, so overall on Blucher itself, the game, it was really interesting. It, it's it's better game than I thought at first. It's growing on me. Uh, Druo is awesome. Always get him. So are Saxon guards. <laughs> they keep rolling sixes. Um, I do think playing the game, you should, maybe artillery should have some way of reloading so they stay in the game and you don't get penalised for using them. As I put there, maybe during the activation you could use two points and that would be it for that turn. They can't move or fire or anything. Anyway, I'm looking to play again soon. The next report will be a lot quicker. I won't go through so many of the rules. Hopefully, uh, pick it up as I am. Hope you enjoyed it as well. Please subscribe. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, catch you in the next one. Happy gaming.